So who really gets to decide who will be the quarterback in 2024? I might be surprising you with this one. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Penguins and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Russell Wilson's in the pole position, according to Mike Tomlin. Justin Fields is right there. They're probably both going to get used in some capacity. Who knows? We'll see. Who gets to make that call? Well, the obvious answer is, I'm sure, the correct answer, and that's Tomlin. He's the head coach. He runs all the football things. And that's not about to change anytime soon. What's more, pole position undoubtedly is going to translate into starting, meaning starting the season, meaning Wilson starting the season. You're not going to change a setting like this so dramatically over the span of training camp and three preseason games such as they are, meaning you're not even going to see the first team offense out there hardly at all. But... And hear me out on this. What happens if Wilson were to struggle? I'm not predicting that. Certainly not hoping for that. Just asking. Putting it out there. What if he were to not be at all like the Wilson of the past that the Steelers are hoping to get, or even the Wilson that the Broncos got last year, who they didn't want to keep around? What if that occurs? Who then makes the call? Because you know and I know, and we now have ample precedent for this, it would take a hell of a lot for Tomlin to make that change. Look at how long he wrote out Kenny Pickett. Look at how long after Kenny got hurt, he wrote out Mitch Trubisky. Arguably, almost costing his team the playoffs by leaving Mitch in as long as he did. I still can't believe Mitch got the start in Indianapolis. That's what I'm saying. So what would happen here? How many games are we talking about? How long of a leash? One of the more common questions that gets sent in this direction. How long of a leash would Wilson have if he was terrible? Guess who has that answer already? You. Let's not forget that 2023 brought up something new and very, very different in Pittsburgh football. And I do mean Pittsburgh football. I'm talking about inside our city. Because when that stadium started its first chance for firing Matt Canada, even though they were started by Penguins fans, they were started by Pittsburghers. And those immediately became an issue. In the press conference that followed that game, Tomlin had to answer a question for the first time that I can ever recall about having to respond to something negative coming from the crowd. Not just, you know, booze or anger or whatever else, disappointment, how in whatever form that gets voiced. He had to answer a question about a specific member and a key member of his coaching staff being singled out with a derisive chant. As someone who's covered... Every Steelers game at Akershire Stadium and before that, Heinz Field, I'd never seen or heard anything like that. And to whatever extent I can stretch back into the Three River Stadium era, well, I mean, that really wouldn't even have been possible. The team was mostly excellent at Three Rivers. And whenever there was an unpopular player or coach or coordinator or whatever, it wasn't going to be the subject of chance. It just didn't happen. It's not really a thing that we did. It's not really a thing that we've done as a city. But this, too, started with hockey fans. Whenever they chanted for the Penguins to fire their management team shortly before this with Ron Hextall, they saw that it it had an impact. And it did. People who own the Penguins heard it loud and clear. Now, I'm not saying they fired Hextall over that, but it certainly put the issue on the front burner. It was something that they had to address. It was something that they had to think about. And I don't know that the eventual Canada firing wasn't really the same thing. 
I mean, go back to that time and ask yourself what choices Tomlin had following that game in Indianapolis. What, what, what was his option? How much of a distraction was he going to allow Canada, but in this case specifically the crowd's reaction to Canada, to become a thing? He's talked about this since then. He did it in one of those uh, more private interviews, more private settings, not a press conference where he, you know, uh, what's that line he always uses, doesn't want to give you guys your pound of flesh. This was in more of a calmer setting. And he said that he felt as if the world was coming down on Canada, that it was becoming that challenging for him to have to operate that way. And then within that, for the offense to have to operate, because all they're hearing all week long, not just from you know us regular media types, but from you in every form, social media, wherever, was that this guy was the worst thing ever. And that they needed to get rid of him. And maybe they started hearing that and listening to it and believing it as well. But it wasn't a sustainable situation. And that was because of you. So what would this quarterback situation look like? I really, really don't think I'm exaggerating when I say the fans will have the say on that. Not the ultimate say, but a really big influence on it. If, if things don't go well for Wilson... But they just might. They just might. When we come back, J1Q. Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George. LGKG is a personal injury law firm in Western Pennsylvania that represents people hurt in car accidents or who need help with workers' comp or medical malpractice. When the attorneys at LGKG make you a promise, they keep it. They've been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. LGKG's been AV rated, the highest rating a law firm can receive, and they've been designated super lawyers. That's actually a thing for over 15 years. It's a rare combination. LGKG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them by visiting lgkg.com or by calling 888 888- 842-5454. LGKG. Today's J1Q comes from Raul, who says, Hello from Brazil, DK. Look, I love your talks, but with all due respect, your most recent talk about this season, the 2024 season, is being do or die. It just means that you are ignoring what is happening around the NFL to the point of being delusional, with no offense. I'm often called delusional without taking offense. Raul continues, the Steelers face the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes two times and he scored almost 70 points in those games. Need to remember that this expensive defense was torched by a rookie, C.J. Stroud. Have you seen what they've done with the Texans? We need to remember that we still have the Dolphins, the Bills, the Bengals, the Jaguars, and the Ravens to beat, and those games are all the flip of a coin with this roster that we have today. We are a good team, that's for sure, but we have a lot of work to be a real contender. We're on the right path, but with a gigantic mountain to climb Love your talks. Raul, I loved your J1Q entry. And hello right back down there in Brazil. But, dude, no. When I said that the Steelers' season could be a do-or-die type situation, I'm not making any sort of forecast of greatness. I am not looking at the current roster and saying, oh, yeah, this is absolutely the team to beat in the AFC. I didn't suggest anything of the kind. You're not the only one that took it that way, though. So that's why I chose your cue here and am happy to address it. When I say that the Steelers are do or die, it doesn't mean that this is absolutely the season because the the 53 man is so loaded and They've got everybody in the prime of their career. No, no. But the approach to the remaining 
roster building, I believe, to an extent, needs to be conducted in such a way that your focus is more on 2024 than on anything else. So if you have, for example, money to spend, and the Steelers do and they can still have more, you go ahead and you spend it now. You don't worry about future cap implications. You don't worry about what Russell Wilson might cost next year. You don't worry about what Justin Fields might cost next year. You take care of business. You execute additional restructurings with pretty much anybody that you can. And you go and you get players. And when you're done getting players, you go and you get depth players. You get more than you think you need. Remember when we all said the Steelers had too many safeties? Guess what? They didn't. We all said they had too many inside linebackers? Whoa! They definitely didn't. That's what I'm talking about. You have to load up to try to become that. In fact, Raul, I would even throw in that if you're talking about tiebreakers, When you get to the NFL draft and you say, well, listen, we think these three players are just completely identical in terms of pedigree and potential and whatever, but one of them is a player at a position that we could use right now, that's your tiebreaker. 2024 is your tiebreaker because I think for all the reasons that I mentioned, and I'm not going to go over them again, last Friday's episode, this is to an extent a do or die season. I appreciate hearing from you. I appreciate everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Steelers. And we're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 